Hey, I'm Alex and this is Brent. Hey, Smarty Pines is coming at you. Coming at you. Yes, it has been a while, so thank you for being patient. It's taken us a little bit getting our schedules coordinated. Busy, busy. But we're finally going to tell you about the Fermentosaurus. Yes, we, uh, if you remember in our previous video, which we will, we haven't decided if we're going to make it a separate video or we're going to put it together, not sure. Yeah. But um, either way, we brewed up a beer, or I should say Ben brewed up a beer, a Belgian caramel wit. He's shaking his head, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did because it's right here. <laughs> we have proof. It's right there. <laughs> so uh, today, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to be serving from this guy. We are. And then we're going to show you, just in case, because we can't fit this guy into Alex's keyser, we're going to transfer from this guy as well. Yeah. So last time you saw, I think we dumped the trub and yeast out of that ball, cold crashed, and it's been sitting at about 12 PSI at 42 degrees for a couple weeks. I don't know if you can see this in here. So if you access your handy carbonation chart, you'll see that that puts us right in the green area of 2.39 volumes of CO2, which should be perfectly carbonated for serving. And uh, you can see in here, we have this little liquid dip tube that's attached to that stainless float. And that's where we're gonna serve some, uh, serve from. Yeah, this thing came with this. Didn't it? And then you just uh, pre-measure and yeah. just waste upon wherever the levels are. Exactly. So let's get to sampling. Yeah, let's try this sucker. So first we're going to relieve the pressure and take this down to something a little lower uh, just so it doesn't uh, shoot out when we're serving it. And uh, But yeah, let's get to it. Let's try this puppy. Uh, so we're leaving the pressure right now for sampling purposes, and it is taking a while. So hmm. interesting. Not sure if that's us or if everybody else has the same problem. But uh, does it matter? Like, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter how hard you pull up on it. It's just going. Interesting. All right, so for our viewers, how low do we want this pressure to go? We want it to be completely degassed. I'm going to degas it, and then we'll probably turn this up to, I don't know, 2, 3, 4 PSI, just so it's not going to fly out of this little pigtail. The pigtail. Now, we're doing this because we have such a short space right here, correct? Correct. Whereas, if you did the proper length of hosing, which we put on a chart before in our previous videos, you should be okay. Yeah, you should be able to leave it right in that 12, 13, 14 PSI range. But uh, yeah, we should be good. Let's give her a go. Hook it up. Pour me some beer. This glass. Oh, that was interesting. Do you want some beer, Ben? Some of your beer? Yeah? All right. Here's a cup. And it is still pretty foamy. It's very foamy. And you degassed that foamy, did Maybe I didn't degas it. One more time. Hiss, hiss, hiss. Well, it's definitely carbonated. It is. Mm. Do the degassing dance. <laughs> degassing dance. It's not bad. No, not at all. Not bad. Anyways, guys, so <coughs> back to uh, the beer critiquing of the vessel that we are reviewing. Yeah, you guys don't care about the beer. You care about that. Yeah, so anyways, so Ben, you did a good job. As far as the Fermentosaurus, I thought that was pretty decent. I mean, it takes a while to degas. Once again, that could just be us. Uh, if, anybody, yeah. if anybody has any input on that, share it with us. Um, but overall, I, I really like this thing. 
Yeah, it's very simplistic. It, it yeah. ease, ease of use is yeah, very it's nice. super cool to be able to ferment, harvest, crash, secondary, and serve in one vessel. I think that's fantastic. You don't have to do any kind of racking, any transferring. You really minimize the opportunity to possibly get some bacteria in there or yeah. you know, mess up at any of those stages. So I think it's really cool. And as we were talking earlier, prior to shooting was, it'd be really nice if, I mean, if you got one of these units at home, fruit flies, <laughs> and, and um, you're just serving from one fridge, that'd be decent. Or if you have a keyser, they can, you can uh, build a bigger collar on because this unit is pretty tall. It's taller than a keg, which is why we're gonna be transferring into a keg from this. Yeah, that, that's one of the only downfalls I see to this, is just it's so, so big. But you guys at home who have those big industrial fridges in your house that are not very efficient and have the see-through <laughs> doors, I know you are out there and have them in your basement or your garage, this would probably work out for you very well. Yeah, I mean, if we wanted to, we could just drill a hole through the side of here and have taps coming out and be said all, all done. Yeah, that's it. So, um, so far, I'm giving this thing uh, a pretty good rating. I mean, if I was going to rate this out of five, I'd get like a four and a half. I mean, the half or maybe even a four. I just, the, 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 the size of it, eh, I mean, but that, that's what you're going to get with a conical, though. Yeah, exactly. And it's good to have all that headspace, too, if you have an overactive fermentation. Uh, you don't want to have to get into the blow-off territory with this like you do on the catalyst. Um, the only other downfall I see to this, which is a downfall of the fast ferment too, is you just have their proprietary little collection ball down there. So if you wanted to have a bigger one, uh, if you're going to have a lot of yeast falling out, then you're, you're, you're kind of stuck there with just that one, so you might have to dump it a few times if you have a lot of trub or a lot of yeast falling out. Did we have an issue when with the actual size of the neck? We didn't. Um, it, it's smaller, much smaller than the Catalyst, but it's a little bit bigger than the Fast Ferment. Um, I didn't try dry hopping in here yet, so you might get into some issues with that clogging up that valve um, because it's so small. And the size of the, the truck bottle. Yeah. Because what we had with the uh, with the Catalyst was we used us the the bottle that came with it, the uh, the jar, the jar that came with it, and it was just a little too small. So then they recommend using a larger one, which makes sense. Yeah, having that flexibility is really nice with the Catalyst, which you don't have here. But it's not the end of the world. That doesn't you know discount this. No. All right. Well, um, I mean, overall, it's it's pretty good. I'd recommend it to somebody if they wanted to go for this. The price is decent. Yeah. And so, it's I mean, nice. that's see-through PET, dense plastic. Not that we're trying to compare it to the other two, the Catalyst and the Fast Ferment, but I definitely recommend this. Uh, I mean, if you don't have the money to go for the Catalyst, and you, everybody's saying you can buy like two Fast Ferments to get to the Catalyst or whatever, right? What they're saying that. Yeah. This guy, I would definitely recommend this over the fast ferment just because you can sample from it after you ferment it. Yeah, so. I think that's the coolest thing is that you can carbonate and serve in that one vessel. You know, having that high PSI rating is it's a game changer for me, honestly. Uh, so for my money, if you are looking to get a conical and you don't want to step up to stainless out of the three plastic choices that you really have in the market, uh, that's what I would get for sure. I would too. All right. All right. Well, maybe. Done talking. Yeah, maybe we'll end this video here, and we'll do a separate video on uh, transferring this to a keg, so uh, we don't make this one too long. That's right. So everybody, thanks for tuning in. Oh, yeah. He's empty. Is anybody else empty? I'm empty. Oh, you're empty. I'm empty. You empty? Yeah. All right, everybody, come on in. Yeah, it's serving a lot better now. Yes. Cheers to you guys too. Catch you later.